I'm going to defend fruit a little bit. I do think that fruit, at least in small amounts, has a place in just about every single dietary category. And people bash it a little bit too much, especially when you start looking at the newer evidence, specifically with berries, and how berries can actually positively impact our insulin levels and positively impact our glucose. Like, this is pretty wild stuff. So let's talk about how you can add berries into your diet specifically to have a positive effect on insulin and a positive effect overall on your life. In the world of longevity, there is a really cool company harnessing the power of pomegranates. So there's a link down below for a company called Timeline Nutrition. Super cool stuff. So pomegranates technically contain a polyphenol that essentially, once it's in our body, can convert to something called urolithin A. I know this is complicated, but essentially only some people, we don't know who, have the ability to convert the polyphenol into urolithin A. Well, urolithin A seems to be very powerful when it comes down to the mitochondria and the cell when it comes down to potential longevity. Very cool stuff. So this company utilizing technology called MitoPure, Timeline Nutrition has harnessed the power of it. So I put a link down below. One of the coolest things you can do for the mitochondria and what's called mitophagy. So sort of the cellular recycling at the mitochondrial level. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. If you're a fan of this channel, you know all about longevity and all about mitochondrial health. So there is a link down below. You can go to timelinenutrition.com slash delour, timelinenutrition.com slash delour. And using that link, you'll save 10% off MitoPure, Timeline MitoPure. So definitely, definitely check it out. You have to check it out after this video. It is truly is revolutionary. Really cool uh, Swiss company that's really paving the way with this. So check them out after this. So there's two things we have to look at with berries two ways that it affects our insulin levels and may impact positively insulin resistance and insulin sensitivity. There's one side which is called the tannins category, which I'll explain in a moment, and then there's one that is called the incretin category. Okay, these are the gut hormones themselves. Not all fruit is created equal. Specific kinds of fruit, specifically berries, like raspberries, strawberries, okay, they have what are called tannins in them. Tannins act as what is called an amylase inhibitor. Pretty fascinating stuff. Here's what happens. When you have glucose, glucose is going to be bound together in specific uh, chains. These are called starches. Now what happens is these starches are bound together, glucose is bound together, excuse me, with these glycosidic bonds, okay, these glycosidic uh, linkages. Now these glucose molecules need to get separated from each other in order to get absorbed as glucose. If they do not get separated from each other, they really don't absorb and don't impact our glucose. Now, starch chains and these glycosidic bonds aren't really a thing to worry about with fruit itself. But when you combine fruit with other carbohydrates, it can affect how you digest those carbs. And here's what's going on. There was a study that was published in the journal Biochemical and Biophysical Research, and it found that tannins, the things that are in raspberries and strawberries, and actually even other things like rosemary, mint, uh, basil, black tea, things that kind of stain your teeth because they're tannins, right? Well, these seem to have what is called an impact on amylase activity. Amylase, or pancreatic amylase, is an enzyme that is secreted by the pancreas to ultimately break down those bonds. So if you do not have that enzyme to break those linkages apart, you absorb less glucose. Tannins are very unique because they are what is called a non-competitive inhibitor. Now in human terms, in English, that basically means that they aren't necessarily selective about what linkages they do or don't break up. Okay, they can work on small amounts, they can work on large amounts. So in essence, what this means is you could have a powerful effect by adding some strawberries or raspberries alongside other carbohydrates because the tannins sort of impede the breakdown of those other starches. And when you're wearing a continuous glucose monitor like I am, you see it firsthand. If I go eat a bowl of rice, I actually spike pretty out of control for whatever reason. I, I, my body just does not really like rice a lot. If I have some fruit, specifically some berries along with it, specifically the berries first, the spike doesn't even go out of my normal range. So it's pretty interesting and it has a lot to do with the tannins. Now, we have to understand that it doesn't just stop at digestion. 
digestion, that whole enzyme activity, that's sort of the first effect, right? We break these glucose uh, binds apart and then we absorb. Okay, now, so in this secondary category with absorption, we have to look at incretin potentiators. There's one in particular called glucagon-like peptide 1, GLP-1. Now, what GLP-1 does is it does modulate digestion, it modulates absorption to ultimately modulate our glucose response. So it operates on a feedback loop based upon what's happening with our glucose. It's very, very important, okay? So there's some interesting research with berries specifically and glucagon-like peptide 1. This study was published in the British Journal of Nutrition, and it's quickly become one of my favorite studies because it took a look at subjects that consumed 35 grams of sugar from a berry puree. They like Billy Berry, Blackberry, Strawberry, they combined a bunch of berries into a puree. And they compared that to equal amounts of carbohydrates and equal amounts of sugar from different foods. So berries, 35 grams of sugar, versus other foods, 35 grams of sugar, equal amounts, okay? You would think that the berry puree, because it's in a puree and it's kind of like pure sugar in some ways, would have spiked the glucose super high. But even by itself, the berry puree had a significantly less glucose spike and significantly less insulin concentration than the other carbs of equal amount. What the heck is going on? Sure, there's some fiber in the fruit, but come on, you've whipped it up into a puree. In theory, it would just absorb super fast. So what's going on? Well, when you look mechanistically, you see glucagon-like peptide levels were significantly higher in the berry group. So ultimately, leading to less of a glucose spike and less insulin concentration, even by itself. Now imagine that alongside some carbohydrates. So you see we're working on two different axes here. The berries themselves, independent of carbohydrate breakdown, are affecting gut hormones that affect our glucose response. What the heck? independent of this whole, whole first category I talked about. Then you combine the fact with they also have tannins, so then they can also have an impact on the other carbs you eat. So it's actually advantageous for you to have a small amount, you don't need to go crazy, a small amount of berries with carbohydrates. It's nuts. I would have never thought this three years ago. I would have thought, Berries are bad, fruit is bad, it's gonna to contribute to a fatty liver, too much fructose, too much of this. But when you actually look at the big holistic picture and how it can affect other foods you eat, I think it's actually a net positive. And part of what I do on this channel is constantly push the envelope with new ways of thinking. And this is fascinating looking at the newer research. So my consensus is yes, have some berries. You don't need to go crazy. You don't need to eat you know, a bunch of tropical fruits that are super high in sugar. We're talking berries that have these tannins. Again, if it stains your teeth a little bit, I think that's a I don't know, small price to pay. Just brush your teeth. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.